How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. Well, I've been um, fairly pleased with the way the players have gone about their work so far. Uh, I think that one of the things that we've got to get more players on this team to be able to play winning football, even when circumstances, you know, get difficult. Uh, one of the terms that I came up with is run hard when it's hard to run, um, when it gets hard to run. And I think some of the younger guys on the team, uh, it's hot, you get tired, not used to that many reps. Um, but we need those reps so we can practice until we can't get it wrong, not just till we get it right. And, you know, one of the things that we're really trying to establish that we talked about before is, you know, to me, everything starts with discipline. Uh, I don't care if it's how you do flex. I don't care if it's how you run across the field, how you do karaoke, how you do high knee pumps, how you do up downs. Uh, if you don't respect that enough to do it right when you know that's the right way to do it, um, how are you going to be trusted in the game to do what you're supposed to do? Because I think discipline is a mindset that's a part of who you are. Uh, so it's how you live your life. Uh, it's how you do everything that you do whether it's how you focus in a meeting, uh, how you get ready to practice, how you ha and how you can sustain practice and uh, make the right choices and decisions. And, you know, it goes kind of back to what are you willing to accept? Um, not really what you say. It's not even what you do sometimes. It's what are you willing to accept from yourself and what are you willing to accept from your teammates? You know, it's, um, you know, great to have high expectations. You know, we've always had a... Um, relentless pursuit of excellence around here in terms of what we try to accomplish and what we try to do. Um, but if you don't do things right all the time uh, at a high standard, you know, you watch somebody else celebrate. So um, that's something that uh, our players have to make a commitment to in terms of what they want to do, what they want to accomplish, and um, what kind of team they want to be. Um, you know, this acclimation period that we do, I think, is a really good thing. It really helps the players sort of get back into football. I don't care how much conditioning you do in the summertime and even how much simulated training you do relative to your position. It's probably never enough uh, relative to what you have to do in practice or even in a game in terms of reps, uh, doing the things that are important at your position. So uh, to have two days in just helmets, two days in shoulder pads, and today being the first day in pads, you know, I certainly think you know, that kind of lead up is very helpful to the players. Um, so, you know, we've gone through five days of really, really heavy installation with our players. Uh, sometimes we go back now and try to review a little bit so that they get a chance to learn it a second time, maybe pick up on some things that they didn't understand, especially the younger guys. So uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Saturday in the scrimmage, I'm sure somebody will ask, what, what do you want to get out of the scrimmage on Saturday? I think really we're not really trying to get the team like play it like a game so that everybody's getting more game ready. I think the next step is is to put the players out there, the coaches aren't out there, uh, make, make it like a game situation, but really be able to do the things that they can do so that we can evaluate them as football players. What is their ability to execute? Do they have you know, the kind of toughness that we need? Can they sustain and focus whether they made a good play or a bad play the last play? So uh, we don't have to really decide about who we're going to coach this early in camp. Uh, but I think how they respond on Saturday goes a long way to telling you if a guy has the right stuff relative to the maturity uh, to be able to be trustworthy to go out there and do a job whether it's on special teams, offense, defense, or whatever part of our team. So that's going to be the number one priority for the scrimmage on Saturday. Okay, coach, we'll start with you on the left, Michael. What are your reaction to the schedule released today for 2020? Uh, that you have Texas A&M now at the end of the season before Auburn instead of earlier in the season. How do you? You know, I haven't even looked at the 2020 schedule. You know, we play Duke. Don't we play Duke in you know three weeks or whatever? I don't have any reaction to the schedule. We work hard to try to have the best schedule we can have. It's our goal to try to get two um, Power Five teams to play. Um, you guys act like we pick who we play. We don't pick who we play. We have to get somebody to play, uh, and that's what we try to do. So um, 
I, I can't even tell you who we play. So I can't respond to something I haven't even looked at. Coach, back on the right return. How much have you seen Brian Robinson improve since he got here? And how much, how ready do you think he is for a larger role this fall? Brian Robinson's done a really good job in whatever we've asked him to do. And he certainly matured. He's been in the program. He's been an outstanding special teams player. He's a really good competitor. He's got toughness. He's very instinctive uh, as a runner. Uh, and I think he has a good knowledge of the overall offense. So there's no reason for him not to be able to assume a greater role. Uh, if there's anybody that deserved more in terms of their role a year ago, uh, it was probably him. And the depth at the position probably didn't allow him to get as many turns as even we, we would have liked for him to. But I don't think that impeded his development at all because he's got great knowledge and experience. And uh, he's been able to play enough to know what it's like to play in big games. And I'm sure he'll do a great job for us this year. Coach, this last one, unless we got another one, Tony. Yeah, staying on running backs, uh, what does Trey Sanders bring to the unit? And given your success with two backs last year on the field, is that something that he could do? Could he, could he come in as a second back? I, I really don't know. Uh, Trey Sanders is doing really, really well in camp. Um, his work ethic is really good. Uh, he's learning every day. Um, you know, his attention to detail seems to be pretty good. He's got some ability that I think may be able to contribute to the team. But again, you know, after five practices and one day in pads, uh, we're not ready to post a starting lineup. We're not ready to post roles for everybody on the team. Uh, I think right now everybody's focus should be, what do I need to do to improve? Um, what can I do right now today to improve? Um, so I can have more success as a player. I can create more value for myself, and I can go earn it in terms of what we want to try to accomplish personally and together as a team. Coach, one more last one. Follow up here with Michael. Well. Oh, sorry, Cecil. I'm sorry. We'll go ahead, Michael, and we'll get Cecil. Just uh, Rayquad Davis. Where have you seen him improve? Show progress. From last He's year? been really good in camp. He's played with great effort. He's got a great attitude. He's really. Showing a lot of leadership, I think, uh, with a young group uh, of defensive linemen. Uh, he set a great example, and he's been very productive so far. Just real quickly on a couple of players, Coach. You moved to Darius Townsend back to, to wide receiver from running back. Uh, was that just a depth situation at running back, or felt he was more? No, we did it after spring practice. He played receiver all summer. Uh, that's where he had played before. We wanted to try him at running back to see if he could give us uh, emergency if we needed to because of our depth. And we think that he can. Um, but we also feel like his best position is wide receiver. So that's where we put him. No different than when we were a little short at corner a couple of years ago and we trained Smitty in the spring to be a corner and never really had to play it. But if it had to play it, we could have played him there. And also, is there is there any kind of update or insight you can give us on Nigel Knott. Do you have any update on his situation? No, I really don't. Um, he's, um, you know, getting rehab, uh, being evaluated. Um, we're hopeful that he can get back on the field sometime soon, but that's going to be a medical decision.